best player, Jared Roden, did not play in their opener and is not in the starting lineup. If he doesn't play, look for Miles Kale, the senior, and Jameer Harris to lead the way for the Pirates. And Yale is led by their backcourt on both ends. Offensively, Swain, he averaged 16 points per game last year, uh, two years ago, I should say. And here's Igo Biagu. He could have a huge impact on this game. He only played 15 minutes in Seton Hall's opener, but he had five blocks. Mm. It's a Seton Hall team that uh, is going to have to find their way pretty quickly chemistry-wise. A tough non-conference slate. Yale is deep. They are experienced, and they are the preseason favorite to three-peat in the Ivy League. Underway at Prudential Center in Newark. And the Pirates control off the opening tip. Jameer Harris works it to Kadari Richmond. Be curious to see how Richmond looks after just four points in 15 minutes in their opener against Fairleigh Dickinson. And a rebound here for the Bulldogs. Pretty clear that Seton Hall wants to establish their low post game right there. They get the ball down low to Alex Yetna, who comes up short. Three for the wing, Jalen Gabadon. No good, but we're expecting to see a lot of threes from this Yale team. Yeah, again, this is a perimeter-oriented team in here. Speaking of perimeter, Harris knocks it down. They're picking up right where he left off against Fairleigh Dickinson. He had four threes. He has a quick trigger. One of the quickest in the entire conference, the Big East. He's our Swain turned it over. And on the run out, it's Miles Kale. One-on-one, -on -one, and he scoops it in with the left. Start for Seton Hall. Beautifully done. Turning good defense and a great offense. Credit Kadari Richmond, number zero, getting the deflection there. And in our conversation with head coach Kevin Willard, I asked him, who leads your team in defensive deflections every day in practice? And he said, Kadari Richmond and Miles Kale. Now there's another turnover for Yale. And early trouble for the Bulldogs. It's Kale from the wing, but he stepped out. <laughs> So a turnover from Seton Hall. It could have been further trouble for James Jones. First of all, good to see Ivy basketball back after a year away. And uh, talking with James Jones, boy, this, this team's deep, but they, they also have to figure out their personnel. Yeah, just like a lot of teams in college basketball, they have a lot of newcomers. But what's not usual is the situation that a lot of Ivy League coaches found themselves in last year. They did not have a season at all. Foul here. And Kevin Willard. Closing in on top 10 now. Big East all-time in career wins. 205 to his ledger. What a job he's done. Yeah, that ranks uh, 205, ranks third all-time in Seton Hall. He's approaching his good friend P.J. Carlissimo, who has 217. Three is short. Offensive rebound. Gabadon kicks it up. And the Bulldogs reset. It's Swain again. No. Long rebound. Nice job by Gabadon to save it. No, they're going to say it's off of Gabadon. Going back the other way. I thought he had saved that off of Ike Obiagu, but it'll go the other way. I think there was a ricochet there that hit Gabadon. You take a look at it right there. That's number zero. He is the reigning defensive player of the year in the Ivy League again. That was two years ago. And Yale coming off a 91-71 win over UMass on Friday. Short jumper from Richmond wouldn't go. Rebound for the Bulldogs. This is Isaiah Kelly. Same starting five Yale used against UMass. Three from Matthew Cotton wouldn't go. Offensive board Kelly. They'll back it out again. Yeah, and Isaiah Kelly is not a traditional forward. In fact, he's more of like a small forward asking to play the center today. <laughs> that's that's tough to try to do to go up against Obiagu. And Gabadon is foul. We talked about Gabadon's defensive prowess, but head coach James Jones says that Gabadon is going to be asked to take on a bigger role to score. He only averaged six points per game two years ago. But they also asked him to play a different role on the defensive end, too. He's going to have to guard a lot of power forwards. He's a he's a wing. He's a guard. But because of the small height that the Bulldogs have, they're going to be asking him to guard basically one through five this season. And so Yale at the foul line gets on the board. Yale team that is ranked 
You know, the top 25 in the mid-major poll. Three from the wing is good. And Seton Hall, how about their start? Shooting the ball. And Jameer Harris. Kevin Willard told me that Jameer Harris is still adjusting to a new system, right? Yeah, okay. He's a transfer from American Bowl. Last, last game he had four threes. Today he's two for two from deep. It seems like he's adjusting just fine. Kelly, unable to answer. Rebound Richmond. Yeah, Harris, four of 11 from the field, but all four were trays. Well, I guess fairly Dickinson. Richmond, count it, and a foul. That's a really good sign if you're a Pirate fan. If there's one guy in this game that you would want to get going early, get him a little bit of confidence, it's this young man right here, Kadari Richmond, who had struggled combined in the exhibition game and their first game of the season. Alex, Richmond was just 3 for 12 from the field. He is a talented playmaker off the bounce. Off the miss. Swooping in to get the board. He's caught. Yale going to run a lot of five out motion here again. You know, Isaiah Kelly, number 35, is not a traditional big. Here he is. Extra pass swing. They'll start the drive and draw some contact. Foul on Harris. They, the Bulldogs have to find a way to get Azar Swain going in this game. He's number five, and he is he was their leading scorer a couple of years ago. He had 17 points in their last game against UMass. And James Jones calls him the toughest player that he's ever coached. And he knows what he's talking about. That guy's been around for 23 years at Yale. He's seen a lot of tough dudes. And he, if he's telling me that Azar Swain is the toughest he's ever come across, then you know that's something. Seton Hall going to their bench with Tyree Samuel. Had a career night in the opener against Fairleigh Dickinson. 19 points, 11 rebounds for his first career double-double. It's Ezid DK off the front of the rim. And battle for the loose ball will result in a foul against Yale. And Yusuf Basaama gets tagged for the contact. Now there's Basaama. He is one of the many first-year freshmen for Yale. Really talented big guy. A lot different than Isaiah Kelly, who he's replacing. We talk a lot about how COVID has screwed up recruiting for some teams. Imagine the Ivy, who didn't even play a year. Some kids had to take a gap year in order to maintain their eligibility. So they're backloaded in terms of their roster. Driving here is Kale, drawing the contact, and he'll shoot a pair when we come back. Rook ready to take another step forward. Yeah. Instead of just being a really, really good player, can he be a superstar? Well, this Seton Hall team, right, you know, you you load up via the transfer portal, but then you've got a guy like Roden, who I think a lot of folks have been wondering, okay, can he can he reach that next level? Finished second of the team in rebounding last year, four doubles. I had a great year, yeah. but there is the next year, people believe. Well, you know, we, we've never seen Jared Roden as the number one guy on the team, and this is his team. I mean, you could say Miles Kale is a leader on this team as well, number 22, a, a fifth-year senior. But this this team is only going to go as far, in my opinion, as Jared Roden takes it. This Yale offense is all out of sorts to begin the game. There he is. And he comes in, so there, that answers a big question. And we were talking to Kevin Willard yesterday, and, and he mentioned didn't know whether Roden would be fit enough or felt good enough to play today. Well, right out of the under-16 timeout, he checks in. That's not the first time or the last time that you and I are going to be lied to by a, by a head coach, <laughs> by the way. I had, a, I had a sneaky suspicion that Kevin Willard knew that Roden was going to play but didn't want to show his cards. And I'm not mad at him. I'm just saying. <laughs> we'll remember it. Here's Yetna launching. And hitting. Oh, Alexis Yetna, the transfer from USF. And it's a 13-2 lead. It was a score and a rugged rebounder at USF. That was his freshman year. That was a sophomore. They're going to need that ruggedness. And if they get three-point shooting, oh. that is just an added bonus. This is a Seton Hall team that really needs three-point shooting this season. And nearly caused another turnover ball on the deck. And it is taken away by Tyree Samuel. Leaking it out ahead. And the Pirates still running the floor now. The first minutes of the season, yeah, right? Yeah. And he only has to run down and back one time, and he gets an easy layup. That's exactly how you want to start for your for your leading scorer. Get him an easy one. Get him going. 
Trey Jackson pulls down the board here. Trey Jackson, a really interesting prospect, number two in white. Super athletic. Takeaway here. Gabadon carries it up court and finishes. A much needed basket for Yale. Calm things down. See the hall up until that turnover with four for the last four. There is Roden. And Samuel. Remember Seton Hall had no trouble finding a point guard last year. Gary Richmond brought in, but the Pirates, through injury, struggled at that position. Jackson for the corner. Skips it off the rim. One-handed rebound. Jack Malloy, the freshman from Greenwich, Connecticut. Really nice offensive possession. Even though Seton Hall doesn't get points there, Jameer Harris drawing two defenders, making the extra pass. Three from August Mahoney. Wouldn't go. And then Seton Hall sloppy the other way. We know Yale will shoot the three. If they're hitting, things are good. If not, could be a long afternoon. Another miss from Cotton. And Yale 0 for 7 from deep. Entry pass. Jackson turns, fronts. Put back wouldn't go. Third try is in. Really nice start to the season for Trey Jackson, the junior. He was supposed to redshirt last season after transferring from Missouri but was declared eligible in mid-December by the NCAA. Didn't get a lot of time, actually only played in three games. But early on in this season, Alex, he looks like a, a really nice developing young player. Yale still hasn't been able to take the lid off, so to speak. Swatted away here by Gabadon, recovered by the Pirates. Samuel lines it up, comes up short. This is the problem when you're a run-and-gun team. You <laughs> can't get anything to fall. Well, James Jones, the head coach for Yale, knew that this could be a situation where they couldn't break down easily Seton Hall's defense. And they are at a height and length disadvantage, no doubt, making every shot from Yale contested. Very Richmond reaches in here. Picks up a foul. Bryce Aiken checks in. He's familiar with this Yale program. Transferred him from Harvard a couple years ago. He is more than familiar, Alex. You undersold that quite a bit. He has lit up Yale in his college career. We'll get into that later. But number one in white, he feels really good about what he's looking at right now. Yeah, I would imagine, yeah. <laughs> out to the corner and Mahoney no and this anemic start from the field continues Yale just one for 12 to your point Alex Seton Hall and Kevin Willard and his staff they've made it a point to defend people at the line it was their Achilles heel that and rebounding I thought kept them out of the NCAA tournament as Swain Yale's leading scorer from two seasons ago gets a mid-range jumper to fall but how do they defend the three better? they got to start with on-ball, one-on-one defense. If you allow your guy to get by you, it creates help and easy kick-out opportunities. There's Gale with the takeaway. And up ahead, Gabadon with the flush. A couple of sloppy possessions here for Seton Hall, despite the early lead, now up to four turnovers. Well, you mentioned that Seton Hall's trying to figure out their point guard situation let's call it and they certainly don't have it settled right now right they have several guys the good news is they have several guys that can handle it and make plays but there isn't one like true point guard jahari long off the mark from three and it's a foul against seton hall going for the rebound trade jackson extending the elbow and getting called for the contact Seton Hall with their fourth turnover here in the first half, and finally Yale getting some easy buckets. Maybe that'll get their outside shooting going. Miles Kale appearing in his 127th career game today. 93rd career starts. Hey, we, we show that he just joined the 1,000 point club yeah. for Seton Hall. Congratulations to Kale. It's not easy to do. Well, Gabadon is quietly taken over for Yale the last couple of possessions, up to eight points. And the Bulldogs have closed to within seven here. Gabadon's a really nice player. Both ends of the floor super strong and is not scared of this moment. Yale 
clearing the defensive glass here. And August Mahoney, sophomore from Saratoga Springs, New York. Team high seven rebounds in the win over UMass. Yeah, keep an eye on him. You might be like, seven rebounds? That guy's tiny. He is feisty. I'm serious. He's yeah. the emotional leader. Look out here. Miles Kale with the steal and the finish. Speaking of tough and feisty, I don't know if there are tougher physical or mental players than Miles Kale. Coach Williams, like, he's a dream to coach. He, he was so happy that Kale is back for another year. Swain, air ball, and right place, right time, Gavin Hunt. And he's into double figures. Are we sure that wasn't a call to LU playoffs? I'm not <laughs> sure if they have that in their playbook. Yale has closed the gap here, 19 12. And nine and a half to play in the first. And Jared Roden in the pink shoes. It looks a little bit like he's apprehensive. But there he fumbles the pass away. He had a, a post up opportunity, and that's where he operates in that mid range area. Jack Malloy, quick trigger. And all of a sudden, the Bulldog took a year off, but came back as a group. Really, only one. Major loss in Paul Atkinson who transferred out to Notre Dame. But here yet now, this is a, a fascinating matchup here against the defensive player of the year in the post. He needs to take him one on one and back him down. And in the man to man, Yale forces a turnover in the corner. Aiken stepped out. I, I'm curious if they're keying on him. After <laughs> 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 they're, very, history. they're very familiar with him. Obviously, Aiken played four years at Harvard and was one of their best players. But interestingly, Aiken, I wasn't even sure was going to play today. Honestly, he came out with about 13 minutes to go in the second half of uh, their game against Fairleigh Dickinson with an ankle injury. He did not return, but he looks okay. It was the left ankle. Three for Gabadon. Well, shorts. Aiken brings it up court. Gets the pick set by Obiagu and drains the three. And one of the oldest players in college basketball. He turns 25 years old this coming December. He's the sixth oldest player. So this guy's been around the block a few hundred times. Really shifty, especially in pick and roll situations. You must go over the screen when you're guarding Bryce Aiken. Stops the Yale run. Gabadon. Unable to finish. Oh, the contested layup. Kale all the way with the stop. Nobody touched him. Meanwhile, off the ball fake. Feinberg swatted at the rim. That is Ike Obiagu and what he does. The leader in block shots. And now Seton Hall Creighton. Easy looks. Again, that is Alex Yetna. How quickly things have turned back in the Pirates' favor. This game has seen massive swings already. Oh, off the uh, referee, stayed in play momentarily. And allows Seton Hall to possess here. Yeah, if the referee is in bounds, that play on. Off the three, the flush from Obiago. I talked in the beginning how much of an impact Obiaku can have. He doesn't play a lot, usually less than half of the game. But when he's out there, you can't help but notice him. He clogs the lane, and he's a monster on the glass. Turnover again. Number seven Whoa. for Yale. What a heave from Aiken. Not sure about that shot selection, but... Yale will gladly take it. <laughs> that looks like Steph Curry yes. pulling up from 30 feet for the Warriors right there. But look, Kevin Willard's clapping his hands. Let's go, man. You got to ride with that guy. He can change a game with his three point shooting. 10 0 run for Seton Hall. They reestablished a 14 point lead. Four to shoot. And another turnover. Seton Hall switching almost everything, one through four. They're not going to switch with Obiago unless they have to, but everybody else is switching on handoffs and ball screens. Moving screen here on Obiago. Tomorrow starting 7 Eastern on FS1.
and a Fox Sports app. Illinois still without their first team All-American Kofi Coburn for one more game. He was suspended for three games by the NCAA. They can't wait to get him back, but a nice break for Marquette. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, well, that, that's a that's nice timing for them. I won't get into a long rant about how ridiculous that was. Sure. This summer, but... it, it was bad. He yeah. should be on the floor playing for the Illini. Uh, agreed. 29-15, 5.58 to go off the inbounds. Another mishandled pass by Roden. I mean, I, I think it's too early to make any sort of judgments again for Roden. This is his first game of the season coming off a sprained ankle. Of course, but there is no doubt that he looks rusty. He's fumbled a couple of passes. He's looked a little bit uh, apprehensive. Not his aggressive self. So again, understandable, but if he's on the floor, he should just not hold anything back. Roden runs point here. Yep. Guarded by Malloy. Wheels around and from the right block gets hit. Yetna is a left-handed player right there. He was driving to his right hand. And if he was more comfortable at shooting this with his right, I think this goes in. Instead, he tries to go back to his left. There wasn't much of an angle for that shot. But he gets two foul shots. Yeah, a couple years ago, USF missed the entire season with injury for the term last year for the season. It, talking with Kevin Willard, is that he reminded him a little bit of Angel Delgado. Ooh, I mean, it's hard ooh. to kind of. I know he. Hey, he. he it his was words, yeah. not mine. But if you can get even a little bit of that, you're in good shape rebound. Yeah, I'll, I'll take half of Angel Delgado <laughs> if, if we're being clear on that. But you know, the points will take. I mean, look, Kevin Willard's selling his players. All right, and I'm buying it, no doubt. Um, this team is old, right? So. Alexis Yetna is a senior. He's been around, and he's got urgency. He wants to play in games that matter. He wants to play in an NCAA tournament. That's what you get with these, some of these older grad transfer players, Alex. Guys who come from programs that haven't had success. And Seton Hall, this team has expectations to get to the NCAA tournament and do some damage. So there's urgency uh, on behalf of guys like Jameer Harris and, and Alex Yet Alexis Yetna. The entry feed return pass Richmond. No. And Yale right now cannot buy a basket, especially from three. Four and a half minutes without a shot to drop. There is the block machine, Obiagu, once again. Kevin Willis said that some of his guys on the perimeter, guys like Jameer Harris, they sometimes, when they get beat, they utter the words, block party, right? So even when your defender or your, the offensive player that you're guarding goes by you, they say block party, which alerts Obiagu to do his job, swatting everything that comes his way. Can you imagine after face that practice, get ball swatted in the fifth row in empty gym? <laughs> I've had my shot swatted more times than I can count. <laughs> kidding me? And it's, it's Obiagu again. Off the spin move from Kelly. Richmond driving. And a foul. I don't know if this was away from the ball. In the it's a one-man block party. And the only guy that's invited, or actually all of Yale, huh, are invited. But the only guy that's... Sending guys away is Iko Biagu. You know, I was talking to Kevin Willard about just how important it is to have a shot blocker of Ike's prowess back there. And he says, you know, it obviously helps because it allows our defenders to be more aggressive on the perimeter, right? It also alters the mindset of the opponent. It makes them doubt whether or not they should bring the ball in. But he's like, there is one negative to having a shot blocker, and it sometimes takes you out of rebounding position. Last year, St. Hell wasn't very good at rebounding. Part of it is because when Obiago's on the floor, if he doesn't block the shot, you're susceptible for offensive rebounds. St. Hall hitting both. They're in the bonus. Malloy, that is the fourth air ball from Yale in the first half of this game. That trophy. They don't give a trophy. They should. They should. 
Should have like a Bill Russell guy on the top of it. <laughs> he already is uh, approaching double figures on the season. And he sets monster screens like that one right yeah. there for Jameer Harris. Well, thrown away by Harris, though. Cotton with three trees around him. That's a tough finish. Matthew Cotton is an aggressive shooter. Yeah, Yale has struggled, but this guy is going to continue to put it up. He shot 125 threes two seasons ago, but he can also put it on the deck. Wow. I don't know if that was a pass by Rich or a shot by Richmond. It looked like he was going off the glass to himself. He just dropped. Oh, this was definitely big boy bully ball. And he... Yeah. Sees Azar Swain, only 6'1. Kadari is 6'6, six, six, about 220 pounds. Just put him in the blender. And they'll convert the three point play. Really nice uh, first half for Kadari Rich. Not just the seven points, but he's also got two steals. He's been all over the Yale Bulldogs on this end of the floor here. It's number zero in white. I think that's the capability that Seton Hall was looking at when they got him out of the transfer portal from Syracuse. Step back jumper, Cotton knocks it down. Yale yeah, just in need of any baskets they can find. Yeah, that's two made shots in a row for Cotton. That's more than he needs to feel like he can get this team back in the game. He had 23 points just two nights ago against UMass. St. Hall's bled by as much as 19. Off the front of the rim, Roden. And a battle for the rebound, Obi Yagu, and they'll jump it up. Possession arrow favors here. And that's more like the Jared Roden that we're used to. He is a deadly shooter in the mid-range. That time it was an off-the-bounce pull-up. And look, if you're a Seton Hall fan, you don't even care if Jared Roden goes... You know, 10 for 15, of course you'd like that, or 2 for 12. You just need him out there getting some reps, right? This Seton Hall team is, is about to take on one of the best teams in the country in Michigan, and I have a hard time believing that Seton Hall can beat that team without a, you know, maybe not 100% healthy Jared Roden, but at least a guy who's ready to play and make shots in that game. Tip to him, back by Mahoney, and Cotton drains a three, just the second of the afternoon for Yale, and it's 36-22. You know, the Cotton uh, heat meter is, is going up, though. That's three in a row for him. Short jumper for Richmond. You're right. You say every facet of the game, and sometimes it's the defensive end that'll spark the offensive side as well. Yeah, again, for Kadari Richmond, he was struggling with his shot in, in the exhibition in the first game, and he's been outstanding, but you're right. It, it was the defense early on that got him engaged in this one, and then Yale defensively has kind of backed off of him and basically dared him to play one-on-one -on -one in the mid-range and in the post, and he's made him pay. Fouled out in his Seton Hall debut. Clean first half this afternoon, nine points, two rebounds. Slicing through the paint, swing, did not finish with the right. Rebound for Richmond. It's just length though, right? So Kadari Richmond let him go by it, but then who do you have to deal with? Number four, Tyree Samuel, who's 6'10", over a seven-foot wingspan as Aiken turns it over. That's the second time, by oh, the right way. Right in front of the Yale bench. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's, uh, I don't know if they're getting after him. They, they, they know all of Bryce's secrets, so maybe they're whispering in his ear some stuff that we don't know about. Battle injuries throughout his career. Probably the healthiest he's been in his Seton Hall career. Super senior. Real overall, you could say. Gabadon from the wing. No. Aiken in transition. Lob pass. And the finish for Roden. You can tell by the bench reaction how important that shot is for their team and for their leader. Jared Roden. Cotton unable to keep his hot streak going. And the lead is 18 with 39 seconds to play in the first half. Aiken rolls around the pick, scores, and the foul. 
And this pirate party continues. Look at this beautiful pass. He knows Jerry Roden needs to see a few more go through. But watch out. Bryce Aiken jumps into the body. Watch him hang. He hangs for about a full second in midair. And this young man can finish with either hand, Alex. I mean, he's small, right? The smaller you are, the more creative you have to be when you get into the lane. Bryce Aiken's six feet tall. He wouldn't be able to put up these type of numbers, folks. Look, this is his career against Yale. Just Yale when he played at Harvard. And now trying to add to that total over 21 points a game. Tommy Amaker and James Jones have a nice little rivalry through the years, so sure. that doesn't surprise. Yeah, Tommy Amaker, the head coach for Harvard, yes. <laughs> Cotton underneath, no. And Pirates will have the last shot of the half. Second play of Tyree Samuel where his length has bothered the Yale Bulldogs. Philly, like he, he, yeah. he's, he was such a mainstay for them for years. Shavar Reynolds, one of the best ball hawks in the Big East. They're used to having veterans come back into big roles this year. He said they, they might have to be simpler than what they're used to to begin the season just because there, there's a lot to integrate here. 45 22, and a spin move from Yetna. He is a load down there on the block and that was against Gabadon number zero who is a little bit shorter but is still a stout defensive player he made him look silly on that play DK from the wing off the mark from three and it'll go back to the Pirates Yells, we've chronicled the Yale's three-point struggles now, just two of 19 from the three. And one of the reasons why is Seton Hall is basically switching every action. And what does that mean? Every ball screen, every dribble handoff, they're switching, and then it becomes a one-on-one -on -one game. You're not going to have clear space. You're not going to have a lot of space for threes. You're going to have to break people down off the bounce and then make the extra pass for threes. And right now, Yale's struggling with that. Struggle in a lot of different yeah. areas, and they don't have an inside post presence, right? Yeah. So they, they, they can't get easy baskets. And even if they did have an inside post presence, as Kadari Richmond continues his hot shooting, even if they did, Alex, you know, Iko Biagu is one of the better defensive bigs in the country, right? So it's not even a guarantee if you had it that you could score down there. Step back jumper, swing, no. By the way, Richmond, that last. Field goal now in a double figures with 11. Swain navigates the traffic. Extra pass. Gabadon to the top of the key. And a three from Cotton is knocked down. Or, but you can see the numbers on your screen. What I'm most excited about, though, is the efficiency of those numbers. These guys aren't just jacking it up. They're playing within the structure of the offense and taking what the defense gives. And shooting 54% from the field. Richmond off the mark from three this time, and it'll go the other way. That's the last part of Richmond's game that, that is yet to come along. He's not a consistent, confident three-point shooter. You can tell he has a little bit of a hitch in that three-point shot. And, but again, I, I mentioned, you know, when I was a sophomore, I mean, I was still learning and growing every single week in practice. I was growing in the weight room. I was growing mentally, learning the game of basketball. It's, uh, better days are ahead for Richmond. Yeah, that just, that's a prime example, right, of without a big post presence. Well, Gavinon's going to finish anyway against Obiagu, but that, that was difficult for Yale just to find a layup. The fifth air ball, for the record, yeah. that the Yale Bulldogs have shot today, I think it surprised Obiagu, and it didn't surprise Gavinon. Can I just say in the background, it's nice to have a student say. I hear you, partner. <laughs> Got a nice student turnout on the side. Students, cheerleaders, bands, let's bring it all. The pageantry of college sports is so much fun. That's what separates it from a lot of what else people could be watching on a Sunday afternoon. Richmond, zero in white as they find Yetna from the wing. Long rebound. Kale was able to track it down. 
Really well done by the Pirates. There are three white shirts were surrounding that basketball. They were basically fighting amongst themselves over who was going to get that rebound. Richmond on the take, swirls it in. You know, he, he had really been excited to take on this challenge. He grew up playing with some kids from Brooklyn. Grew up playing against Julian Champagny, Posh Alexander, both at Seton Hall. And one of the new rule granting immediate eligibility. After his minutes fluctuated and didn't find the playing time he wanted, he, he wanted that challenge. He's getting it now. And he got some criticism from Jim Beheim, the Syracuse head coach in the offseason. So I'm wondering if Kadari Richmond's playing with a giant chip on his shoulder. <laughs> getting off the rim. And this tough afternoon shooting the three for Yale continues. Well, and Azar Swain, number five, and we, we talked about him in the open. Two years ago, he was Yale's second leading scorer at 16 points a game. It's been a nightmare of an afternoon for him. Just one for nine from the field. Gavin lost the hand. Kale and Harris on the run out. Kale will take it himself. That was one on four for the record. Alex. That was a one on four fast break. I'm not sure that was the, the best move for Miles Kale. Shovel pass to Kelly. Navigating the baseline and they throw it away. Look out in the Yale bench. So many deflections today, right? Kevin Willard and the staff at Seton Hall, just like almost every Division I program in the country, they chart deflections. You're not going to see that on the stat box score if you go look, but every coaching staff knows because deflections are a great way to measure your activity and your focus on the defensive end. And Seton Hall, their, their defense has been very active today all afternoon. Shot clock inside of three. Again, just switching every ball screen with Swain. He has no airspace at all, and he's not lightning quick, at least not quick enough to break down these pirate defenders. Roden probing, backing out. This is his game, the mid-range. And right there, he's short, but that... That is what he is an expert at. I would call him one of the best in the country at mid-range shooting. Tough take for Swain. Paid the price. As he and Obiagu came together. That was a really difficult shot in between three guys for Swain. Yetna off the mark. And it'll be Yale ball trailing by 21 when we come back. Kadari Richmond. That, I was surprised to see a coach of Bayheim's, you know, uh, stature say that. I mean, Kadari has moved on, and Bayheim should move on as well. And Willard loves and is embracing Kadari and his skill set with open arms, and he's been awesome today. He mentioned it's still a sophomore, still very early in his career. He played last year in a pandemic season. Coming back home, essentially, to the New York City area. Block underneath the rim. I just think it's wrong for a coach to call out a freshman. Like, like most freshmen don't know what they're doing. <laughs> like, I remember when I was a freshman in 1999 at Stanford. I had never been in a weight room program like that. I, You know, I didn't eat healthy. I didn't, it, it, There's a lot going on. I had to go to class and was held accountable, like, more than I had ever had before. So, I don't know, I just thought it was unfair. And, you know, I'm happy for Kadari for coming out here in his second game after a kind of a slow start. Mm -hmm. And really balling. I mean, he, you know, Kevin Willard was saying, you're going to have a big-time role on this team. And I mentioned the one part about his offensive game that is yet to come along is his three-point shot. But that's okay. Kadari is a monster on the defensive end and is a shot creator. Well, he finished third in the ACC in steals last year. Yep. I mean, that's when you're as a backup point guard. Yeah, he only averaged 21 minutes a game. Right. Said he talked to uh, Isaiah Whitehead and Kadeem Carrington, stars at Seton Hall, about coming back to play home, or play at home in the New York City area. He's from Brooklyn. 
And uh, they really sold him on trying to make it work here at Seton Hall. This will go back to the Pirates. One of the guys that we haven't even mentioned for Seton Hall is Tyrese Samuel, number four. He's got zero points today. He's got a few rebounds, but he is another guy that I think has potential written all over him. And if they can, if he can make a jump, he averaged five and a half points last year, so it's not all offense. He's also a really good defender, but I'd like to see them get him some touches like right, right here. Not able to convert. Career night against Fairleigh Dickinson on both ends of the floor. And, and Kevin Willard said the biggest challenge for him will be consistency. Consistency. It's the challenge for all of these really, you know, excellent players. You know, the word star is used quite a bit, Alex, but I only reserve that moniker for guys who show consistency. Like, like Jared Roden is on the cusp of being a star. Right? He's been a complimentary player for most of his career. Last year, he averaged 15 points a game, which is really nice. But if you want to be like a Mamu Kelishvili type of Miles Powell type of star, you have to bring it every single night. Whatever you do, whether it's scoring or rebounding, you got to bring it every night. A foul here on the take from Gabadon. This sent him to the line, reigning Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. One of these players who took a gap year. And just for background, if you're unfamiliar with the Ivy League, the requirement is that you have to finish your athletic career within eight total semesters. So if you take class and you're not playing, sorry, your your eligibility is shortened. So a lot of these guys left school yeah, for most year. of them. Yeah. Roden from the corner buries a three. So a lot of these guys are just kind of getting back into the swing of the full-time academics in addition to basketball. Nice defensive play there from, from Aiken. But yeah, going back to Gabadon, he's a computer science major, and while he took that year off of hoops, he didn't take the year off from life and learning, right? So he joined a startup with former Yale basketball player Jason Abromitis, and they... They launched Launchpad Fitness. And so a couple of young entrepreneurs using their education wisely, and now he's back on the court, though. Fell away from the ball. A couple guys work for the Yale Endowment Office. About $30 billion, you know, in the endowment over there. Just, <laughs> just a little bit of money to make. That is insanity. So, yeah, one of the notes that I, I found interesting was Yale is the third old, oldest college in our country. The third oldest. The first oldest is Harvard. 1636. <laughs> That's crazy. And number two is College of William and Mary in Virginia. Third is Yale. Williamsburg, yeah. And, and keep in mind, it, it, today this is clearly an off day for a Yale program that everybody expects to win the Ivy League once again. And head back to the NCAA tournament. James Jones has led this program to five Ivy titles, three tournament berths. This is a program that had a 54-year tournament drought up until 2016, but they are in the midst of their most successful era in program history. Yep. They've had some NBA talent, too. Just two years ago, Mia Oni was drafted. He became the first Yale player drafted since Chris Dudley in 1989, I believe. 87 was, was Dudley. But Mia Oni is now still playing. He's in his third season with the Utah Jazz. And he led that 2019 Yale team against uh, LSU in the tournament. They gave LSU all it could handle. They ended up losing that game by six or seven points, but it was a one-possession game with a minute and a half to go. Trey Jackson off the mark. Offensive nice. board. Road in, and it'll fall. Let's see if they'll, they'll wave it off. That might be offensive basket interference. I think it was tipped in by Trey Jackson. But really nice sign, though. Jared Roden getting up, and now... How many rebounds does Jerry Roden have? Seven, which was his average last year. Watch here as a tip. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was Tyrese Samuel. Tyrese Samuel. That might have gone in, by the way. He, I think he stole two points from Roden. He's got to <laughs> apologize to your teammate on that now. Well, maybe he'll get him back at the line here. <laughs> You've got to be happy. I mean, again, regardless of whether uh, Kevin Willard was playing coy with us, Roden has looked better as the game has gone along. Now, uh... 
with seven points in 16 minutes. Yeah, I, I joked in the first half that Kevin Willard told us a lie that, that Roden wasn't going to play, but I, I, I really do think he's trying to be extra careful. I just know as a former player, Alex, if I were in Jared Roden's shoes and I knew that we were going to play Michigan in a couple days and I was good enough. We all know that Jared Roden's not 100%, okay? But I'm good enough to play, Coach. I need to get it to knock some rust off. Cause the steal, but the alley-oop goes awry. But another deflection. It's combined with returning stars, Hunter Dickinson, Eli Brooks. That will be a fun matchup. Tuesday on FS1. Fifty-five thirty-three. Seton Hall in control, looking for their second win on the season. They're trying to be a better defensive team this season. Certainly, they've done that. Look at them fly around, making multiple plays. And certainly, Yale has not shot the ball well, even when they've been open. But some of that is the activity and the length of the Seton Hall Pirate team. All right, so. Early in the season, what are some of the things on your mind about this Seton Hall team? Question number one, is Jared Roden ready to be the man? He's been a complimentary player to Miles Powell and last year to Mamu. This year, he's going to be number one on opponent's scouting report. I talked about the defense just now. The Pirates were a below-average Big East defensive team, and that's not where Willard wants him. And then the last is the resume wins, okay? This, to me, as Tyree Samuel gets fouled, is going to go to the line and shoot two free throws. This is a really nice win. If this, if this score holds up, this is a really underrated win. I think Yale is going to be fantastic. But then they have Michigan, Ohio State, and Texas, okay, all on their non-conference schedule. And Seton Hall fans, I'm going to remind them, last year Seton Hall was just one and three in quad one non-conference games. Mm. And that's where you build your resume, in the non-conference. Yeah, the Big East is good, but really to, to build a, a complete resume... You have to knock off some teams in the non-conference, and their one win last year was a true road win against Penn State. This year, they're looking for more. Can they get one of those Michigan or Ohio State? Can they get one? Of course they want two, but can they get one of two? Right, one, one might be good enough for a yeah. resume builder. That's what I'm saying. And again, the, the Texas game, that, that Texas game is December 9th, and it's going to be here at the Prudential Center. Big time opportunity. Texas just lost to Gonzaga. They got blown out, by the way. They were yeah. lost. Uh, they were losing by 20 at halftime. Drew Timmy at 37. He was ridiculous. Cotton off the front of the rim. Rebound grabbed by Roden. Seen Hall. This was uh, on paper a lot trickier. I, I think we're both surprised at, at how yes. Yale came out shooting the ball here, but give credit to the Pirates here, and this is going to go the other way. August Mahoney on the drive on an offensive foul is called. Really nice job there by Trey Jackson sliding over if he wants to get more minutes. Uh, certainly his offense will help. He's a good offensive rebounder, but defensively he can use his athleticism and his lateral quickness right there drawing the charge. Aiken right in the face of Eza DK. We've I mean, seen all fans have been, you know, they wanted so much from him last year, and again, just injuries ruined him. He only averaged six points a game in just 14 appearances in a Pirates uniform. But watch how shifty he is. A fantastic ball handler, but shooting off the bounce like that, Alex, is so much harder than it looks. He made it look easy. Guys in the pros make it look easy. But shooting 25-foot shots off the dribble, tough. Player who's battled injury his entire career. Yeah, he's missed basically the equivalent of a season or more because of injuries. Off the fast break, Kale. And Seton Hall having their way. I love watching Miles Kale play. And speaking of, like, we... we took a stroll down memory lane in the 1989 uh, final game. How about one of the best college basketball games I've seen in the regular season the last three years? The 2018 game, Seton Hall against Kentucky when Miles Kale hit a step back to, to win that game. It was with nine seconds to go. That game was so awesome. It was Aiken to Kale. 
super athletic and strong. Out on the open floor, the Seton Hall Pirate team is going to be a handful for everybody. But honestly, that, that 2018 game against Kentucky, that was when Keldon Johnson hit a, a half quarter to send that game into overtime, and then Kale wins it with a three in overtime. The crowd was rocking. Oh, that game was at Madison Square Garden, by the way. I probably should have oh, led. Yeah, you should, probably yeah. should have led you with buried that. the lead there. <laughs> My bad. Dangerous collision there with Samuel going over the top of Michael Feinberg. But there's Kale. He'll he'll always be remembered as a legend just for that shot against Kentucky. He's had a really nice floor game today. Approaching a double double. What I like about the Seton Hall guys, especially in this game, you can see nobody's trying to do too much. Mm. They, you know, a lot of coaches, they don't know roles. They're trying to define those. I think Seton Hall is ahead of the curve when it comes to roles. They still have, right, they're still trying to get Jared Roden back into form. Okay, I get that. But their roles are pretty clearly, uh, like, I'm not going to say set in stone, but, but they're clear. Oh, well, and it's interesting because we, we talked about, you know, integrating those three transfers, and it's one thing to say you have a role at the beginning of the season. It's another for it to be executed on a daily basis. Accepted, right? Yeah. Guys yeah. don't want to accept a role if it's not quite the role that they're hoped for right. in the offseason, and that's a real thing, and that's a good thing. These are young men who are competitors. They're trying to advance in their life and in their career. You don't want them just to accept a, a lowly role. They want to continue to keep working. Isaiah Kelly at the foul line here. Yale in the bonus. It's a two-shot foul. Misses them both. Well, the students are happy to be back. They're into it, man. <laughs> they don't want Yale reaching 34 points for some weird reason. I'm not sure if there's three tacos if they score 34, but... Put back wouldn't go here. Obiagu. Able to uh, track it down. Just another example of the length, right? Yeah. That, that has overwhelmed Yale. So this year, Seton Hall is the 25th tallest team in America, which is quite a downgrade. Last year, they were top five in the country in terms of height, and that's because they lost Mamu Kalishvili and they replaced Mamu with a lot of wing players. So that'll bring your average down. But they still are super long. Tie up and a timeout, Grant. For the Bruins, but yeah, I mean, they still have Ron Harper Jr. and Geo Baker. Here's Isaiah Kelly. Off the ball fake. Feinberg, no. And another board for Obiagi. Man, he almost elbowed Isaiah Kelly in the face right there. <laughs> Actually, in terms of clearing glass, that was his third rebound of the afternoon. Surprisingly, Ike Obiagu is not a great rebounder. He's an amazing shot blocker, but he doesn't gather a lot of bullets. Yeah, three. It surprised me a little bit in his shot selection. He's shot more than half of his shots, and I know we're only two games in, are from three. So he's not the, like a, a rugged low post bang. I'm talking about Yetna, number 10 in white. He's been kind of more of a pick and pop big. Open screen. And they'll go all the other way. In the third team, they've averaged five NCAA tournament uh, teams per season. Last year, the league had only four. That was the lowest they've ever had. So I'm very confident in that the Big East is going to have five teams. It's a matter of who else raises their level play in the non-conference. I'm not talking about the Big East conference play. Who else in the non-conference? So can Butler get a couple? Can they sneak out a couple of wins with their veteran squad that they have? They would be a dark horse. But Seton Hall should, barring anything weird, if they live up to their potential, they should easily make the NCAA tournament. The, the X factor in that to me is what does St. John's do? Because they don't have a great non-conference schedule yeah. in terms of quality. They have that big game against Kansas, but that's about it for the Giants. 
Yeah, they, they have a game at Indiana for the Gavit games coming up. That, that game's in Bloomington. That's a tough place to, to play. 18,000 screaming Indiana fans, but you're right. So that game in Kansas, St. John's needs to win one of those two games. And they're a fun team to watch, but that's yet not putting it in. And the Seton Hall team. of having a non-conference schedule that is littered with so many top teams is you don't need to be perfect but <laughs> they're off to a good start here then beat fairly dickinson in blowout fashion and this is i, I agree with you casey this is going to wind up being a quality win by the end of the season yeah it doesn't look like that right now if you're if you're watching this game but but yale clearly doesn't have the, their roles quite defined like Seton hall does they're going to bounce back they're going to have a great year and you're right you never know sometimes you beat a team in november mm -hmm. and then come february it's maybe not a good win anymore or maybe it's stronger so that stuff will play out but a, a good point that you made alex is when you schedule tough you don't have to be perfect when you don't schedule tough you put some real pressure on yourself like what we talked about with st john's there's some real pressure on st john's to to win either at indiana or that game against kansas if they don't if they go oh and two in those games they are going to have to finish in the top four in the Big East, or they're probably not going to get in. And that would be a shame to not see Julian Champagny and Posh Alexander. By the way, Julian Champagny has never played in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. One of the best players in college basketball who's not played in the tournament. I think they tried to save it. Try to cover it up like a like like a running back hitting the A <laughs> gap there, bouncing off Seton Hall defenders. Nothing has come easy for you. No. Even their free throws. He has four for eight from the free throw line. A team that a couple of years ago averaged about 75 points per game. Leading the Ivy League. Foul on four. That's going to be an offensive yeah. foul on... on Trey Jackson right there. They ran a play for him to get a not necessarily a post because it wasn't that close to the basket. It was more like a mid-range post and allow him to kind of operate. He and Jared Roden are probably the two best options that, that Seton Hall has out of that mid-range post area. Ironically, they're also the two players, Trey Jackson and Jared Roden, who wear pink shoes. Different shades, though. <laughs> yeah, ja Jackson's more like brighter shoes. You see him right there in the lane? Jared Rodens are more like the Pepto Bismol type of feel. But if you wear pink shoes, you better be balling. You better be ready to go. That's in a career high 14 in Seton Hall's opener. Just two points this afternoon. Kale, right of the lane, went up strong and drew the contact. Miles Kale is one of those players. There's the shoes. Those are those are beautiful. He takes a real man to wear those kind of shoes and, and look the part. And Trey certainly does. I couldn't pull it off. There's no doubt. Um, what I was gonna say about Miles Kale, there are certain guys when I watch them play, I think to myself, man, I would have hated to guard him. Like I would have hated to guard Miles Kale. Now Miles Kale isn't like an offensive savant, but. When he sees a gap, he is driving it right through your chest. I mean, he's either going to get an offensive foul or he's going to put you in the second row. Bryce Aiken gets a nice hand as he sits here. Kale, you know what? Th that type of ball is exactly the type of guard you get in the Big East, right? Just will not go away. Yeah, I mean, that was Miles Powell, yeah. right? He was yeah. a guard that wouldn't go away, but could also shoot from 30 feet. Sure. Right? That's the combination you're looking for, a guy who's mentally and physically tough, but also has the skills to drop 30 on you any night. And that's why Miles Powell is a, is a legend at Seton Hall, and will always be, despite what's going on right now. Off the inbound. DK Ooh. curls off the screen, got to the rim, got hit on the way. That was a mistake by Tyree Samuel, number four. He's got to come off and protect the rim. He's 6'10". He was too busy. Look at him right there. He needs to be off of his man. So a nice foul. You don't want to give up. Even though this is a 
Well, my math isn't too good, but this is a 32-point game. You don't want to allow your opponent to get wide open dunks down Main Street. By the way, um, beyond the fact that, you know, students are right in front of this basket, and listen, we found out why they're super excited for missed free throws. Oh, yeah, let them know. I want to know. Three burgers if two free throws are missed on this end. They got, uh, they got it earlier in the game. Oh, so that, right? that so one didn't It matter. still counts. Yes. I think they, they want double. They want double double <laughs> burgers. <laughs> It wasn't just because they wanted the, the misses. There, there was an incentive there. Why is it that college kids will do anything for a free burger? They honestly will almost do anything. Wouldn't, wouldn't you? No, no come on. <laughs> you, I don't believe that for one second. <laughs> Training table, movie on uh, scholarships. Oh, you gotta... <laughs> Mr. Adonis over here. Oh, these kids are so much more spoiled now yeah. than they were 20. I went to college 20 years ago at Stanford. They get way more. They get way more free burgers. Now. <laughs> Trust me. And with name, image, and likeness. All right, here's a reaction. Look, they already have free burgers, <laughs> they, but they're mad. That's awesome. Last year, the cardboard cutouts would have been really disappointed about those two two free throws, but this year, you get the real human reaction. That's what we're after. Uh, that's why we love the sport, even in a game like this. Student turnout on a Sunday afternoon. It was sorely missed last year. End of the game, Jahari Long. And the steal from DK. Long fouls him on the way by. And Jahari is trying to get in on the action here. Everybody's playing well for Seton Hall. Jahari did have a career-high six assists in the first game against Fairleigh Dickinson, but has only played three minutes in this one. There's a long jam at the wing, the guard and wing position of Seton Hall. It's going to be hard for him to crack it. Right here are the burgers. They want burgers. BGR. <laughs> We don't have a, an official sponsor on that. I don't even know who's sponsoring those I don't know who it is. I think it's a, well, they announced it on the PA during one of the media timeouts. By the way, DK, we were talking about some of these guys from Yale that uh, took a gap year. He's actually one of the few that stayed on campus. So he can transfer out and, and become a grad student elsewhere, but uh, he was uh, very adamant he wanted to continue his uh, education at Yale without the gap. 69-37. Unexpected blowouts. At Prudential Center, 4.16 to go, and ball will go back to Seton Hall. Yeah, just a game that Yale's going to just, I don't know if they want to learn from it, or you just want to throw it in the dumpster and set it on fire, right? Like, I'm not sure how much James Jones, the head coach for Yale, I'm not sure how much of the film he's going to watch with his young players uh, on this game, or they're just going to move on. Every coach is a little bit different, right, in that regard. Resuming a non-conference series with Siena up next. A game against another mid-major power in Vermont. Rim protection for Seton Hall continues to be terrific. And this with their bench getting in on the action. Trey Jackson off the mark from three. We'll step aside. With Seton Hall on their way to a season. Him and Miles Kale probably. But... Uh, his offensive game, I, I thought he had a really nice rhythm. He was a creator, efficient, 5 for 8 from the field, 13 points. Just a really important step for him. Remember, he's the transfer from Syracuse, and he's only a sophomore. He was the only underclassman in today's starting lineup. Seen Hall wound up going to the same starting 5 they use against fairly Dickinson. They actually took out... Uh, Kevin Willard did uh, Kale, Richmond, and Obiagu in the first five minutes after a slow start in their opener on Wednesday. But uh, no slow start this afternoon. No. You know, it'll be interesting. Jared Roden, we all assume, will be starting on Tuesday against the Michigan Wolverines. So who is the guy that's going to be having to come off the bench? It could be Kadari Richmond, who could be the leader of that second unit if he embraces that role. Be a fascinating matchup. Gavit tip off games, which get underway in the next couple days. Bounced around and 
Picked up by Seton Hall. Using their bench players, Sylvester Granda, into the game. A chance to use the guys at the end of the bench here early in the season for the second straight game. Seton Hall last year just 14 and 13 in the season. One game over 500 as well in Big East play. They were streaky, struggled with consistency, faded down the stretch. Had lost four in a row entering the Big East tournament. Got knocked out early to Georgetown. A really a disappointing finish for the Pirates, who I thought had the roster. It should have been in the NCAA tournament. Mama Kalishvili is the co Big East player of the year. There were three. There were three Big East players of the year, which I find bizarre. But certainly Mama was deserving of that. They have a big hole to fill with him. I mean, he was, not only was he an incredible player, but he was so unique. 6'11 and was often the playmaker. He created shots for himself and for others. And that's why one of my biggest questions is, can Roden be that type of player that not only gets shots for himself and scores, but then can just kind of put the team on his back and get whatever he wants, on, you know, on a game per game basis? There's Roden right there. It's important for him just to get out there. Right? It almost didn't even matter how he played, but just that he played. Azar Swain. Right, he'll want to crumple up some of the game film shooting wise just three of 14 from the field that free throw puts him in the double figures but struggled mightily and swain it, he is going to unless unless he gets hurt azar swain number five in blue is going to be yale's all-time leader in three-point field goals made. He only needs 28 for this season. <laughs> and last year, he, he set a record with 93. So, I think he's going to get there unless he gets hurt. First team all Ivy League selection is our swing. Senior from Brockton, Mass. Actually, he's uh, closing in on 1,000 points as well. Uh, right now, 22 points shy of that mark. But uh, not much that he could do, not much his teammates could do today. Against Seton Hall inside of two minutes to go now. Some of the starters remaining in the game for Yale. Trying to put together some stretches of play here. Or it's possible that James Jones doesn't have a lot of guys that he can put in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want to put guys in who haven't maybe earned it. Although he's got three guys who are about to probably get their first minutes of the season right now. Yeah. You know, late in the game, the, the students love it. V, v can score and get on the board here. Yeah, if you're out there, you might as well s squeeze off a bullet. If you got some space, let it fly. What will be the louder uh, cheer? If Granda hits a three or they get free burgers? <laughs> <laughs> well, about to find out, potentially. <laughs> there it is. Shoot it, young man. The tip. I'm not sure if they're gonna give that one to Granda. Maybe it is Genevia Smith. Yeah. Yeah, Stole it from him. Not sure Granda can uh, play above the rim. No. <laughs> Smith can, but 48 seconds left. It was a solid drive. I mean he passed up that open, it would have been a difficult shot, but this is a solid drive. Oh, no, he was like two feet. He, he was about two feet short of getting a hand oh, on that ball. Don't need to laugh. That's the, the height differential there. That's on the wingspan. Another burger opportunity right here. First free throw missed. The second one gets free burgers. All right, so look. look the, <laughs> this is, like size and length matter in basketball. Like that's just an example right there or, you know. There it is. More burgers for everybody. How about the announcers? Do we get burgers, or you, you have to be a student enrolled at Seton Hall? Because I'm, I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, at, look at guys. Come on, man. Got to jump higher than that. Yeah, we've been working on our plyometrics all season. <laughs> <laughs> Plyometrics. <laughs> 
So Seton Hall will get to 2-0 on the young season. Yale will sustain their first loss on the year. And, of course, it is leading up to Tuesday's matchup against number six, Michigan. A huge opportunity in non-conference play. Got to tip off games. Here at the Financial Center. Memories, perhaps, of 1989 for Seton Hall fans. I'm sure that'll be a talking point leading into the game. Well, this was a complete performance by the Hall at home. And they will get to celebrate a blowout win against the reigning Ivy League champions, 80-44, the final.